boom, let there be light. 270 watts of compact fluorescent grow lights. And here's a short video on how to make it. I started with an old bathroom cabinet, which we're no longer using. I also have this piece of timber, which will fit across the center of the bathroom cabinet from top to bottom. Then I have these six E27 light sockets. And these are really easy to get. They cost about a dollar each. And then I have six of these 45 watt, 5500 Kelvin compact fluorescent bulbs. I'm using 5500 Kelvin because it's a good middle ground between 6500 and 3500. And I'm using 45 watt bulbs because per watt they put out the most number of lumens. So we get the best efficiency. These cost about $7.30 each. I'm using a cheap survival blanket, which cost about $1 as a reflective background. I have a few of these junction boxes left over from my LED grow light, so I'm going to be using those to keep all the wiring safe. Speaking of wiring, we need some wires, of course. So I've got some left over from the last project as well. Although I didn't end up using any, I have some heat shrink tubing. And of course, I did use some electrical tape. The final piece of the puzzle is an old power cable, which I took from an old bedside lamp. I need to evenly space the light sockets. So on each side, I'm putting three at even intervals. I need to pre-wire each light socket, which is very easy. It doesn't really matter which way around the wires go, although traditionally the live cable goes to the point of the bulb and the neutral cable goes to the ring. Each socket can then be screwed down onto the wood. There's three on each side, and then I need to flip over the plank of wood and add three to the other side, also evenly spaced. It helps to have the wires facing in the same direction. Here you can see the six sockets evenly spaced and screwed to the piece of wood. While this looks quite complicated, the wiring is actually very simple. Basically, all of the blue wires need to go together, and all of the brown wires need to go together. I then screw the junction box to the piece of wood. The finished product is what I call the backbone. It's all of the electronic parts together, completed. You can use exactly the same thing in any kind of enclosure, but this is the most important and essential part of your grow light. I had made a hole in the enclosure to house a fan. But really, the convection currents should be enough to keep this grow light cool. Next, I need to make the inside of the enclosure reflective. This is where I use the survival blanket. Whatever method that you have to stick it down is fine, but it just needs to stick firmly to the sides. I then need to reopen the hole, which allows for cooling. You can use a fan, but again, I'm just going to rely on convection currents, which should do the trick. I've drilled a small hole here to allow for the power cable to come through. And finally we're ready to put the two pieces together. We've got the reflective background, which can be anything. It can be a tub, it can be a tray, it can just be a sheet. And we have the backbone, which uh, obviously houses all of the electronics. It's quite simple at this point. I simply slide the backbone into the enclosure and shortly I'll be screwing it down. Just a couple of screws on each side will keep the whole thing solid. And finally, it's time to give it a go. I've plugged it into the wall, and there you go. Beautiful 270 watts of 5500 Kelvin compact fluorescent light, which is just perfect for growing any kind of plants. I've installed it in the loft garden, where it will be growing some chili seedlings over the next few months. The whole place keeps very nice and cool. The light only gets up to about 25 degrees at the top there. If you'd like to see more loft garden projects, please check out my channel. Also, I've created a DIY LED grow light with 96 watts, which is worth checking out. There'll also be an update of the DIY LED grow light coming soon. Please subscribe. Thank you ever so much for watching. Also, if you'd like to make a comment, I'll respond to as many as I possibly can. Also, if you'd like to give me a little bit of appreciation, you can give this video a thumbs up. But really, I'm just hoping to help some people out. So thanks again for watching and please subscribe.